What I was going to share with you today was going to be something else, but have you ever been headed in a direction and thought for sure that's where you're supposed to go, where you're supposed to be, but then what you thought should have been wasn't? Anybody follow that? You see, I had a plan for today, but then out of nowhere, God dropped something else in my heart for you, and it hits home for me. I could have shut my ears and ignored it. Have you ever done that? Part of my husband's story is clearly hearing God speak, but he didn't want to hear it. So he literally put his fingers in his ears as if that would work. He ended up looking back at that moment and knew God was calling him to something more. Thankfully, God gave him a second chance to respond. For that, I am grateful. So when God speaks to my heart, I listen. I can't ignore it. I've walked this faith journey for too long to not respond, and I've learned the more I say yes and the more I surrender what I think should be or what shouldn't be, that's where abundant life is actually found. Those are often moments God in his amazing love for me draws me more into his story, and that is always an adventure and for my good. So what is it that God wants you to hear today? When what should have been isn't, he is still good. That's it. But if I'm honest, for me, that's a biggie. When what should have been in my life, when what should have happened, when what life, family, career, you fill in the blank, should have been, but is not, he is still good. We live this life full of dreams and set goals. And as believers, we even lay all those down at Jesus' feet and trust him with all of it. Still, there are parts of our story and things we just know that we know should be a part of that God-written story. When they are not, our hearts are left crushed, broken, confused, angry, hurting, questioning, and so much more, if we're honest. Part of my story is infertility. The desire for children wasn't one that happened overnight. God had to do some big construction work in my heart to flush out all the fear, control, and selfish ambition. So when I got to a place where my heart was ready, what I thought should have happened didn't for a long time. Oh, the irony, process, and timing of life. Around that season, my husband was inspired to write a song one Wednesday night at our church in Franklin, Tennessee. A friend who was struggling big time with addiction walked through the back doors, and just by looking at him, you knew he had lost a battle. Still, he was there. He came to gather with other broken people, seeking love, forgiveness, grace, strength, and community to link arms with to face another day. The words of that song simply say, over and over, oh Lord, how good you are. We all are in need of God's grace through the storms and should have beens of life. We can trust he sees, he knows, he is good, and this is not the end of our story. 1 Peter 5.10 And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. This life is not void of suffering, but we can remember these sufferings are temporary and there is a greater story being written beyond our present chapter. The very real losses and struggles we face, if we allow them to, can produce in us patience, move us to obedience, soften a prideful heart, prepare us in ways to comfort others who may face similar hurts, and they may make us more like Jesus. The what should have been moments and what should not have been moments, when covered in God's grace, turn into something unexpected and beautiful. That's the truth. Remember, a speck of sand doesn't belong in an oyster, but what is created as a result is a pearl of great price. If you're struggling with the what should have been, trust what is, and that is God loves you and is with you and has a plan even in what is not. I'm Lori Klein.